So, you know, my oldest kids, the twins, are eight years old. And uh, more and more, I'm noticing something about them that seems increasingly unique among their peers, but shouldn't be. And that is that my eight-year-olds act like eight-year-olds. They are naive and innocent and energetic. They like to play imaginative games. They like to run around outside. They love books. Uh, my son especially loves Huck Finn and Tom Sawyer, and you know he loves those characters. And he'll run around the yard in overalls and bare feet, pretending that he's on some great adventure. A little while ago, all the kids built a raft out of logs so that they could float down the Mississippi River, even though we don't live anywhere near the Mississippi River, but still they wanted to build the raft. Um, my daughter plays with dolls still. She likes to dress up in costumes. She likes to sew and make different kinds of crafts. She, she, uh, last week, she made herself a, a dress out of an old blanket. Um, actually, it might have been a new blanket that my wife had just bought, and she cut it up and made it into a dress, but that was fine. Now, none of this information is terribly fascinating or special. I mean, they're just kids being kids, right? Very gender stereotypical kids, too, which I know makes me an extremely unenlightened parent, and I'm fine with that. But I've noticed that a lot of kids their age... Um, not all, certainly, but a lot, aren't like this. Many kids these days at eight and nine years old don't have the same kind of energy or creative drive or the desire to run around outside all day. This isn't just my own anecdotal observation either. Lots of research has shown that many kids today aren't playing the way we did when we were kids. They aren't running around outside. They're not reading books. They're not playing physical or imaginative games. And there are many societal factors which may help explain this shift. But the biggest one, without question, is that many kids today are living out their childhoods inside a digital world. The single greatest factor that explains why my kids seem a bit different from some of their peers is that my kids don't play video games. They don't have phones. They don't use the internet. We're not living off the grid in the forest either, though I kind of wish we were. I mean, nothing, nothing wrong with living that way. We're living a pretty normal life, for better or worse, except that our kids don't have video games and they don't use the internet. There are plenty of parenting decisions that I have made that I later questioned or second-guessed, but this is definitely not one of them. My wife and I decided early on that we would force our kids to have a real childhood. We're not going to give them a choice in the matter. You can't give a kid a choice in this because if you give them a choice, they're going to choose the TV and the, and the internet and everything else. I mean, every, every kid's going to choose that if you let them choose. So for us, there is no choice. A childhood full of imagination and physical play and scraped knees and all the rest of it. That's what they're going to have. And so far, they've had that kind of childhood because we're keeping them away from every screen except the one single TV we own, which is in our living room and which they're allowed to watch for limited periods of time. And, uh, and of course, only shows that we approve of ahead of time. I thought about this today when I read a report revealing how Facebook, which owns Instagram, has for a long time been aware that Instagram is harmful to kids, especially girls. The tech giant apparently conducted its own research into the effects of social media on the developing minds of kids, and they found that the effects are rather dire. Social media, the focus was on Instagram, but this holds true across the spectrum. Social media for kids causes anxiety, depression, body image issues, uh, lower life satisfaction, and so on and so on and so on. Makes kids lonelier. Makes them more depressed. It makes them unhappier. Now, Facebook knows this, and, and this is the research they did. Again, that's not the only research on this topic. This, this, this has been studied again and again and again and again, and almost all the research you'll read will tell you this. And Facebook knows it, but they swept its own findings, their own findings under the rug, which has drawn comparisons to the big tobacco companies that discovered a link between smoking and cancer decades ago and didn't tell anybody about it. And I think the comparison is apt, though, if anything, it undersells the problem. This is going to sound extreme, and maybe it is, but I would rather my kids smoke cigarettes than spend all day on the internet. Because the damage done by the latter is that deep and that profound. Our kids are being fundamentally changed. They're being turned into different sorts of people, worse sorts of people, because of their overexposure to screens. They're not learning how to be authentic people or how to live an authentic human life. Many kids today simply do not know how to find joy or happiness or fulfillment outside of the screen, though they can't really find it inside the screen either, so they just don't have it at all. And that's why when I hear about what Facebook has done to cover up the damage its own product does to the people who use it, I don't blame Facebook primarily. I mean, they obviously deserve 100% of the blame for the things that they're doing, but there's another 100% portion that can be assigned to parents. 
Look, I, I understand that at a certain age, it might be difficult to keep your kids away from the internet. It's, it's different when a kid is 16 or 17. But parents today are giving their six, seven, eight-year-olds phones with internet access. That's what parents are deciding to do. And they can't use the excuse of, well, I want my kid to have a phone in case he needs me, in case of an emergency. Even that is pretty extreme. Like the idea that your kid needs to have this constant connection with you all of the time. No kids in history had that. I didn't have that when I was a kid. I didn't have a phone where I could call my parents at the drop of a, the drop of a dime. And, and, you know, I survived. It was okay. But if you do want that for your kid, you, you, could, you can buy them a phone that doesn't do anything but make a phone call. And you can make it so that it only can call two numbers, you know, your house phone and your, and your cell phone, if you actually still have a house phone or whatever. I mean, you can decide. So you can give your kid a phone like that. That's one thing. But there are parents who say, you know what? No, no, no. I'm going to give my kid, my eight-year-old, a phone with full and complete internet access. And I'm going to let them have it all the time. It, it's, it just blows my mind. Do you know how you can keep your seven-year-old off the phone? Here's how you do it. Real easy. Don't give him one. It really is that easy for a seven-year-old. For a 17-year-old, it's different. For a seven-year-old, that's all you got to do. Because they can't have anything if you don't buy it for them. How does your child, your young child, benefit from having the internet in his pocket 24 hours a day? What are the advantages? I mean, make a chart and list them. List all of the advantages to your seven or eight-year-old having 24-hour access to the internet. You know, in what ways is his life and existence enhanced by spending almost all of it online? And go ahead and write all those, all those advantages down. Now go to the other side. List the negatives. In what ways can he be harmed? What are the downsides? And then when you look back at the chart, which column has more bullet points? And it, it must be the negative column because I can't actually think of one single genuine advantage to an elementary schooler having a smartphone. And yet millions of parents make this choice for their children. And, they, and then they blame the social media companies for the harm that they, the parents, have intentionally exposed their children to. Maybe think of it this way. Imagine a parent who keeps their kid away from the screens, doesn't give them a phone, doesn't let them spend five hours a day playing video games and so on. Now, imagine that parent sitting at the child's high school graduation. Do you think that he, sitting there in the stands, is going to look back on his son's childhood, reflecting, nostalgic, and say, man, I wish I'd let him spend more time staring at screens. (sighs) Do you think any parent who makes that choice will have that regret? We all know the answer, and we all also know that many parents will regret and already have regretted allowing the internet and the media and video games and everything else to consume their children, shape them, mutate them, dominate their lives. And that is why today it is not social media that I'm canceling, it's not Facebook, but parents who allow their kids to use social media in the first place. They're the ones who are canceled. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with all your friends.